What's going on guys? Welcome to your fourth Java game applet tutorial where we're going to learn about something called double buffering in this tutorial. Why we need it, what it does. But before we do that, let's quickly use our initialize method because right now we aren't really doing anything. And when we run our application, uh, as you can see, it has a kind of no defined size. We can change the size. Um, so let's just give it an initial uh, a size to work with. So what we're going to do within our initialize method is hit control space and we're going to say set size and as you can see it either takes a dimension or a width and a height. We're going to choose the one that takes two parameters and for a width we're going to say 800. For a height we're going to give it 600 and uh, there we go. Save it and run it. Good as bacon. Uh, we get something like this. Pretty simple, pretty awesome. Um, just a defined size. Uh, again, when you embed this in a website, you'll kind of define what size it is when you're embedding it. But uh, as for now, that gives us a rough, you know, size to work with. Now, I'm just going to run this again and hopefully it'll show. Uh, the problem that we're having is there's some, sometimes you'll see the ball flicker, um, basically saying that the ball is not loaded in the background. Um, it didn't happen that time. But if you run the program enough, you'll see that it kind of flickers. And if you're developing a game, you don't want that to happen because people will be like, whoa, this game's flickery and it's not supposed to. At least I don't think it is because it doesn't look good. And, uh, you know, so we don't we want to get rid of that. And what's happening is within our thread, again, we within our start method, we create a thread and started our thread. And then it runs within this infinite loop and we call a repaint method. Uh, what the repaint does is it actually goes through a different method um, called update first and then uh, our update method if there's anything in there um, basically all that's going to do is it's going to clear our screen and then it's going to call uh, whoops it's going to call our paint method which we've defined here so it's going to set our um, set our ball up the gr as green and you know paint it in the right position all that stuff but the thing that's happening is it's going through that update method it's clearing out erasing everything and then trying to paint as fast as it can so you won't notice that the the screen is blank so for even like a millisecond it's gonna be blank and sometimes it's longer than that and you'll see that it's blank and it just looks like the balls flickering so what we're gonna do to get rid of this problem is actually kinda of override the update method and create a new image as the background uh, well, I'll just show you as we go along we're just gonna hit control space and we're gonna call the update method because again when we call that repaint method within our thread that gets called 60 times per second and it goes through this update method and then it goes through our paint method so what we want um, within our update method is to copy the image that's currently on the screen get the graphics from it you know create like a photocopy and then instead of saying clear screen we're gonna display that copy um, instead of a blank screen so it's basically gonna have our old pixels and then when the paint method gets called it's gonna paint on top of that photocopy that we made and update that way instead of having a blank screen and this concepts called double buffering um, it's used quite a lot in and in, uh, in, you know programming applications so anytime you hear something called double buffering that's basically what we're doing right now so the thing that we want to do first is we need to set up an image and also a graphics because again we're getting passed in a graphic for our update method and we're getting passed in a graphic for our paint method um, so we also want to have a graphic to kind of copy or get our double buffer graphic um, and we also need to set up an image so I'm gonna scroll up to the top of our code here what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a private image we're gonna call this I and we're also gonna set up a private uh, graphics and we're gonna call this uh, G for, um, well not G because all of our parameters are named G. Let's go with uh, double, um, double buffer G or double G, something like that. Real gangsta, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and then all we have to do is we have to add our import for our image so we can use the methods of an image. And again, we've set up an image I and a graphics double G. So now let's go down to our update method where we're gonna make the double buffering magic happen. Now the first thing that we need to do is set up our buffer. So if our image is not equal to anything, it's gonna be null. So we're gonna set up an if statement. If our image, which is I, is equal to be null, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our image to be equal to, and then we're gonna create an image 
um, which is a method, create image, and what we're going to do is we're going to get the width and the height of our current applet. So what we're going to do is we're going to refer to our applet, so we can say this, um, referring to our applet, um, and we're going to say dot get size and dot uh, width. We could also say 800 for the width and uh, 600 for the height, but just in case if we change it later on down the road, it's better to program like this where uh, you're getting the size using like a method to get the size of the applet, um, the applet's width, or getting the size of the applet's height. So again, all we're just going to say for the y or the height is we're going to say this dot get size um, dot uh, height, and that's going to return our height value of our applet which again would be 600. Um, so again, you could either type 800 and 600 if that makes more sense, or you can use these methods of this applet, uh, get the size of this applet, and then get the width from the size of this applet, um, same for the height. So that's all we're doing. We're creating kind of an image with the same height and width as our applet. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our double G, um, which is our, our double buffer graphic. Um, equal to our image that we just set up and we're going to say dot get the graphics of that image. Kind of confusing but uh, this update method will pretty much be the same for every um, applet that you create using double buffering that you can just copy and paste this stuff. So it's pretty pretty awesome. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the color of our graphics uh, or of our double buffer graphics. So we're going to say double G and we're going to set this uh, equal or set the color um, equal to whatever the current background is. So we're going to say get background, um, and that's just going to return. Let's see if you if you kind of hover over it, it gives you some information about the method. It says gets the background color of this component. So all we're doing is we're referring to the current background color. And there we go. We set up our graphic or a double buffer graphic um, to be the same background color is whatever our applet has. Now we didn't define our background color of our applet yet so this line of code really doesn't matter too much but if we did define the background as a certain color it will get that background of our applet set it you know set our double G to be the same as our, our background image and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say our double G as well we're gonna say fill the rectangle so kind of like fill oval, except we're going to say fill rectangle. And what we're going to refer to is 0, 0 for the starting position, so the top left corner. So for our width, again, we're just going to say this dot uh, get size um, dot width. And also this dot get size um, dot height. And again, that's just 800, 600. So all we're doing is we're creating another graphic or another rectangle um, of the same background color as and the same size as our our previous image producing kind of a copy you can think of it like that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say double G and we're gonna set the color again and uh, we're gonna now set the color to get the foreground color and uh, you know set that up and then we're gonna call our paint method and we're going to pass in our double G. And lastly, what we're going to do after we call our paint method, we're just going to say G, which is referring to the graphic that we get passed in to our update method. And we're going to say draw image. And we're going to refer to the image that we set up called I. And we're going to say 0, uh, 0. Let me see if I can get uh, kind of the parameters here for you guys. So we're going to use the draw image method, which takes the image x position, y position, kind of the top left corner again, and then also our image observer, uh, which we're just going to return as uh, this. So for our image, we're going to say image is i or x, and y is both 0, and then we're going to just say this um, for our graphic, or for our image observer. So now let's just kind of talk through everything that we've done. Hopefully you guys will understand it a little bit more clearly. Um, again, we had a flickering problem where our you know, when we painted our image or repainted our image, it cleared our screen and then tried to paint as quickly as it could. Sometimes it couldn't paint quickly enough and we could see the screen was clear um, and it looked like it was flickering to us. So what we did is instead of having a clear screen, um, we're going to try and copy an image and get that image out uh, displayed. And then once our paint method gets called, you know, cover that up. 
Again, if you guys didn't understand anything that we just did, if you're like, what the heck did we just do? I don't understand any of this. I'm just going to give up learning Java because this doesn't make any sense to me. You're a terrible teacher. Uh, don't worry, um, guys, because even if it doesn't make sense later, we have the code written out. You can copy and paste this code and put it into any web applet or any kind of Java game, and it will be the same concept and it will work as our double buffer and we'll get rid of that flickering issue. It doesn't even matter if you don't understand why right now. Um, I just wanted to get rid of that issue right now before we get into developing our game. So hopefully uh, you guys have this all written out, copy perfectly. Even if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. Trust me, not a big deal. Um, it's kind of confusing to learn about the double buffer, uh, you know, this early on uh, learning Java game programming. But it is a central key, so let's just run this, make sure it works, and as you can see it does. It's cool beans, and uh, we can, you know, resize our applet, but as you can see it's still within our 600, um, or 800 by 600 frame here. Um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. We got rid of our double buffer. Wasn't much of a tutorial, it was more of like, hey, we need to fix this now. I don't care if you guys don't understand what's going on, just do it, and uh, and you're good. So um, I know you guys probably didn't enjoy this tutorial because you probably didn't feel like you learned too much. It's just more confusing than anything else. But we got rid of one of our main problems and we won't have to deal with this double buffer issue ever again. Um, so thanks again for watching. Stick with the series, guys. I promise you it'll get better. It'll be more fun. You'll learn more stuff as we go on. But as for the flickering and the double buffering um, kind of thing that we had going on, that's how you solve it. And... Uh, Thanks again for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. Have a great day.